Haggai chapter 2. Now, from chapter 1, we now we've seen we're in the time of the temple being built, finished. This book is dated in the seventh month, in the one and twentieth day of the month. Now, remember, we left off the four and twentieth day of the sixth month. Now, we're a month later, 30 days in a Jewish calendar. So, we are 24 days later from the last verse. Came the word of the Lord by the prophet Haggai say. So after they finish the temple, God speaks up. Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Shatiel, governor of Judah. No king. They're gone. And to Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. Here's the high priest. The law is back. Actually, he's never left. Daniel followed the law. There's the priest. You don't even have a priest today of the Levites. They don't even know who the Levites are. So not only the Jews without a temple, they don't even know the priests. And to the residue of the people saying, Who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? Those that saw the one that Solomon built. And when you read in Ezra, you remember those are the ones that cried. Why did they cry? Because they remember what the temple looked like. And how do you see it now? It's built. But it'll never be like Solomon's temple. It was a temple that built by the heart of David, even though David never lifted any construction. It was prayed for by David. It was prayed for by Solomon. Israel was right when the temple was built. Is it not in your eyes in comparison of it as nothing? not the same is it you know I've been saved since 1987 25 years no 29 years it's April 25th and there's been some lovely Solomon temples in my life and because of sin they've been destroyed because of abandonment of God, they're torn down. Because of backsliding, they're not standing no more. And sin has taken its place. And though I've gotten right, though I repented, it's not as the glory as the first day I got saved. I can go back to Bethel, but you know, I've got a lot of scars that I caused myself. Since April 1987, my sins, I now know what I've done to God. I can't plead innocence after salvation. It was my own fault. Jacob, when he returns to, to Bethel, you see what his life was wrought? Never the same. Yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord, and be strong, O Joshua, son of Josedek, that guy's going to have a multiple name, the high priest, and be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work. God is not for a welfare state. What would they be working on? The temple's gone. It's built, I mean. I mean. Not working was the subject of chapter one. At the end of chapter one, it's built. Now you got built. Now you're you're going back to the priest. Now you're doing what the law says. Get to work. For I am with you, saith the Lord of hosts. 
According to the word that I coveted with you, when you came out of Egypt, so my spirit remaineth among you, fear ye not. I I'm still with you. The covenants that I have made with you people, they are bound by the oath of the I am the living God. Again, I've said it over and over and again. I want to stress it. You cannot say God is finished with Israel. It'd be a lie. God would be a liar. You would make my God lie. And if God will lie to a people called Israel, you think he'd lie about my salvation? For thus saith the Lord of hosts, yet once, it's a little while. Jesus used that expression. And I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. Look at that. We're bouncing over how many years? To the second advent of Jesus Christ. Do your job. Do what you're supposed to do. And look for me to come. I will shake all the nations. And this did not happen the first advent. They rejected. Why did God jump to the second advent? He knew they would reject the first advent. So don't look forward to your Messiah coming on a donkey into Jerusalem. You're going to say within a week, crucify him. You wait to have to Jacob's trouble, then you... And the desire of all nations shall come. I will fill this house with glory, saith the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine. The gold is mine. What they brought from Babylon, saith the Lord of hosts. The glory of this latter house shall be greater than of the former. Solomon's. The present is better than Solomon's. For God himself will walk into it. At 13 years old, he'll sit down and talk with those people there. He'll walk in and kick over the tables. What will Jesus do? I will, in this place, will I give peace. Is that first advent? Saith the Lord of hosts. The place was destroyed in 70 AD. In the 4 and 20th day of the ninth month, two months later, in three days, in the second year of Dyrus, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Ask now the priest concerning the law, saying, All right, walk up to the priest and ask him two questions. If one bear holy flesh in the skirt of his garment, interesting way to carry food. You ever see old mom, old grandma doing that with, with an apron? You ever have your mother, your grandmother, as a, I did as a child, and they pick up your shirt, you hold it, and they put a whole bunch of fruits and vegetables in it. And with his skirt, do touch bread, or pottage, or wine, or oil, or any meat. Shall it be holy? And the priest answered and said, no. No. It's... Then said Haggai, if one that is unclean by a dead body touch any of these, shall it be unclean? And the priest answered and said, it shall be unclean. You can't touch a dead body. There was limitation set in the law. Purification. Then answered Haggai and said, so is this people. Uh-oh. So is this nation before me. What? Unclean. Saith the Lord. 
so is every work of their hands. What? Unclean. And that which they offer, their tithe, the animal, there is unclean. <clears throat> They didn't want to work in the first place. And now I pray you consider from this day upward. From before a stone was laid upon a stone in the temple of the Lord. The excuse is, you know, well, you know what? The temple's not built, so why should I do anything? Since those days were when one came to a heap of twenty measures, there were but ten when one came to the press fat for to draw out fifty vessels out of the press, but there were twenty. All right, this verse is saying you're not getting your full potential. You walked up twenty measures, but in actuality, you ended up with ten. You wanted fifty vessels from the press fat. You have olive oil or wine, and you only got 20. You didn't get full. And you're not getting full because you're not, you're unclean. Chapter 1, you're unclean because you wouldn't do what you're supposed to be doing. Now, chapter 2, you're unclean. Now they're saying, hey, I got right yesterday, chapter 1, where is the blessings today? Come on, God, we did what we're supposed to. Be like me going out in, in the garden, planting a tomato plant, and say, God, okay, where's my tomatoes now? I planted it. Patience. Seeds are not instant. Consider now from this day and upward, from the four and twentieth day to the ninth month, even from the day that the foundation of the Lord's temple was laid, consider it. Is the seed yet in the barn? Question. Yea, as yet the vine. And the fig tree, and the pomegranate, and the olive tree has not brought forth. From this day will I bless you. The blessing is not coming. But God said, you're getting right. You're doing right. Now I'm going to start blessing you. You may say, well, Lord... I listened to that message, I repented, and I got right. I want all the benefits now. No. That's not the case. I've always used the illustration, you chop off your arm. Oh, Lord, I repent. I was so stupid. I am so sorry I did that. Oh, man, put it under the blood of Lord Jesus Christ. What are you doing? I'm waiting to see my arm grow back. Your arm ain't growing back until you get the glory. You will die the rapture tarries with one arm in your casket. You may repent and got completely holy right with God. And, and that case, it's never going to come back. Say, Lord, I got saved. I believed on your son. Now remove this infirmity from you. Paul, Lord, I got this thorn in the flesh. No. God, can you remove this thorn? No. God, this... I said no. But I'm saying no. I'm doing your work. Absolutely not. I set up all these churches. I don't care. I'm being persecuted. You got the thorn in your flesh. Again, the word of the Lord came unto Haggai in the fourth and twentieth day of the month, saying, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. God will get the ultimate victory. 
I will overthrow the thrones of the kingdoms. That would be the throne in England. That would be the Oval Office. I don't know what they call the, the seat in Russia. I don't know what they call the authority in Germany. The seat or throne of Peter will be overthrown in the Vatican. And I will destroy the strength of the kingdoms of the heathen, non-Jews, non-Christians. Don't you know that's what the Jews want to hear? That's their great news. You tell a Jew, you can be saved and you can go to heaven. Mm. No. But you tell that Jew, read through the entire Testament. I'm going to get those nations and I'm going to destroy them. I just ask for it and I'll deliver. Yeah, all right, let's go. Grab the sword. That's where the Catholics and the Muslims and all those religions have it wrong. They're in the wrong book. And that's where they steal from Israel. Muslims out there shed blood because they got it from the Old Testament. They think they're Israel. Catholics will go destroy cities and towns and countries in the name of Christ because they're Old Testament Jews. Smith, no, not Smith, Joe, yeah, Joe Smith, will take his congregation all the way to Utah, slaying people because we're going to build that eternal city. The Congregationalists, if you don't join our one true church, the new, the new Israel, what's it called? I need to say more. See, when you see somebody go in the name of Jesus Christ, go forth conquering and destroying, they're taking the title and the blessings off the Jew for what? So the Catholics can get a piece of land. Don't believe me? Maryland. How's that? And those are the religions that will say God's all finished with the Jew. Go over right now. Get your tickets. Go pay to go over to the holy city, Jerusalem. And one out of three of the people will be giving you tours. Jewish people. Catholics. Or Arabians one of the three and the Catholics will tell you all kinds of history perverted why are they over there in Jerusalem because they want that land why because they believe they're God's Jews what about your colored men and all that Sammy Davis jr. this guy Prince all Claim to be Jewish apostolite. Why? So we can get a physical blessing, make all this money, and be blessed. That's what God promised. Remember Solomon? You can pick up gold and silver on, on the street corner as it were rocks. That's what they want. That's what they claim. Hey, that's the Old Testament says, hey, you be good, you can be rich. I like that. So I want to be an Old Testament Jew. But I don't want to live the law. Problem. And I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them. And the horses and the riders shall come down. Every one by the sword of his brother. They're going to kill themselves. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, will I take thee, O Zerubbabel, my servant, the son of Shetil, saith the Lord, and will make thee a signet, authority, a sign. See that? A signet? Jews require a sign. Zerubbabel is a sign. He's a power. He's authority. For I have chosen thee. Anointed. That's what Christ means. Chosen thee. Saith the Lord of hosts. And what an end to the book. He picks out of the two chapters, Zerubbabel. He's my servant. And I'm going to look, I'm going to destroy the nation. I'm going to destroy the nation. I'm going to destroy the nation. That is the good news. That is the gospel. 
for the Jewish man, for the Jewish woman. When Jesus came riding in to Jerusalem on that ass, did they want him go to Calvary? Absolutely not. When he stood before Pilate and before the, the people, bleeding, you know what he was to the people? A failure. Why? Because tomorrow morning we're going to wake up and we're going to be under the Roman authority still. Wasn't there a place that the gospel say that Jesus ran off because he feared they were going to make him king? Didn't Peter get all happy? Lord, we got swords here. Let's go. We're going to kill. Peter, put it up. It's not my time yet. Didn't Jesus tell Pilate, listen, if, if this was my kingdom, if, I think it is. My servants would fight. It's not now. We're going to fight at the second advent, Joel chapter 2. Not now. So the Jews saw Jesus Christ as a failure. He did not get victory over the Jew, uh, over the Romans. And the Romans are still in charge. And their city is destroyed by Titus 70 AD. There's two different heavens in the Bible. There's a land and there's New Jerusalem. And Revelation 21 says there's a new Jerusalem and a new earth. That new earth goes to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the 12 descendants. 